Welcome back to another episode of In-Depth Angling. Today we are breaking down fall crappie patterns, tips, and techniques on Stockton Lake located in Missouri to help you catch more and bigger crappie this fall. Before I go into covering everything in this video, if you love crappie fishing, fish Stockton Lake, or just want to learn how to catch more crappie year-round, consider subscribing as it supports us make more videos like this one for you, and it will help you keep you updated with new videos that are released on our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on new information that can help you guys catch more fish. Let's dive into this and break this lake down. As we move on from hot summer days into cool fall mornings, bait fish and the crappie that feed on them move to shallower depths back out of their summertime haunts on the main channel and into larger coves across Stockton Lake. This transition for the crappie progresses as the water temperature cools down and we reach temperatures closer to the crappie's peak metabolism where crappie feed heavier on bait during the fall as they bulk up before the winter. The fall crappie bite gets kicked off on the southern shallower river arms of the lake where water temperatures drop the fastest from the 80s in the summertime down into the 60s and 50s where that metabolism peaks for the crappie and they start to feed heavier. This trend continues throughout all of the 298 miles of shoreline across Stockton Lake starting in the shallow and first and then cooling the larger deep waters on the northern side of the lake. The main channel near the dam will be the last area to see the crappie fall bite take hold as shallow water cools much faster than deep water does and that is even true for the backs of these coves that are down here by the dam. The shallow ends of these larger creek coves will cool before the main channel out here does. The areas that are way far up river here are going to cool much, much faster than the areas even in the middle of the lake, down over here in the middle area, or down by the dam. This is especially true with areas that have runoff coming in, if you have a creek flowing into the back, or if you have just these rivers flowing in back here. As we get that cooler rainwater that comes with these fall storms, these fall rains, it helps cool down that water temperature much faster than just the air temperature does. Crappie chase after the shad that move to these areas in the early fall, as the rest of the lake remains relatively warm, actively feeding crappie. They're never really going to be far away from their food source during the fall. Backs of creeks like this are going to have lots of shad pooling up in the back. You can see them on the surface time of year as that water cools down. And flooded timber areas back in here near that are going to be great areas for crappie to stage up just on the outside of breaks and the old creek channels that used to exist in Stockton as this is a river system that's been dammed up by a dam on the north side. So all these coves in here that are fairly good size used to have their own little creek channels. There's a drop off or a ledge somewhere in there and as I zoom in here you'll see some of the blue lines feeding in the back from old creeks like the Adams branch here, and this thing has got a little dotted out creek line right here that's on Navionics from our old creek bed. Those are good areas to look for crappie, usually off that first break towards the back or near some standing timber or brush piles. Areas that crappie are going to want to ambush fish as they're moving in and out of those creek areas. You might have some warm afternoons, those shad might push off a little bit more, and those crappie will be sitting off in there in the early part of fall. Those are just really great areas, high percentage to find crappie, bass, whatever you're trying to catch really in Stockton Lake that time of year because just about everything feeds on shad. So crappie and everything else that wants to eat them are going to be in those kind of areas. But really to find good numbers of crappie, having that standing timber or brush is going to be where they're going to stack up the best. In our previous video, summer crappie patterns, we talked a lot about the thermocline that sets up in the lake. During the fall, that goes away, and we have something that's called the fall turnover. Once the surface temperature of the lake cools enough to be colder than the bottom temperature, where those two layers of water are, Stockton Lake experiences the fall turnover where the water column gets mixed, so they kind of flip, and uh, that bottom water gets mixed with the top, and that uh, puts a lot of sediment and makes more of a stain and kind of a murky color into the water, which this can make the crappie fishing tougher, but it doesn't make it impossible, especially if you use something that's got a little bit more of some bright color to it or some vibration. These are some of the jigs and different things I like to use a lot during the fall as fish are eating a lot of bait fish. They're fishing really shallow compared to the rest of the year and I'm able to fish these things fairly quick just a slow steady retrieve back over through those staining trees through those brush piles they'll start to stack up a little bit and be very aggressive so as I'm searching around for these fish I like to use something like these little baits here that are like a swim bait it's got some vibration coming off of that as well as a little blade it's got some flash and that helps during uh, muddy water time it also helps get their attention if there is just a lot of other bait fish around it's something that stands out and they might key in on 
that one more than the other school. You can use something that's got a little bit of a different color. I like to stick a more with natural if you have cleaner water, but you can always switch over to something that's a little bit darker or a little bit even brighter, more like a chartreuse or a pink or something that's going to stand out in that muddier water and be more visible to those fish then if you're going through the turnover period. That usually happens sometimes in the middle of the fall. Other baits I like to use throughout the fall, especially after cold fronts or right after storms, those fish are kind of hit and miss. They're either more fired up because there's cooler water in the back of the cove and they're feeding even more or they're kind of turned off and they're pushed off into some of those uh, deeper spots that maybe the next drop off or the next brush pile down from where the bait fish are and you can coax them out still with these little shad pole things. This little back tail here kicks around quite a bit and uh, you don't really have to have a lot of motion on that thing to catch them so if you're just going to hover over the top of brush piles or fish standing trees vertically and vertically fish instead of cast around this is a good way to go out and catch some good crappie on stockton and the other one is kind of more of a bass technique but because they're feeding so heavily on shad and the shad size varies a little bit during the time of year depending on whether you're starting in the beginning of fall or to the end i like throwing these little kytex swim baits around i'm using anywhere between a quarter ounce to a 16th ounce jig head on these things and just casting in the shallows right over the tops of brush piles through those trees but if you have a live scope it helps to be able to see how far down your bait's going before you start your retrieve try to keep it maybe a foot above your structure that you're trying to pull that thing over you'll catch all kinds of fish on this you'll run into white bass run into large mouth some walleye on occasion as you're targeting these crappie you're mainly going to be catching those around those brush piles and these things will bring out some of the bigger fish if it's a little bit bigger profile to it that i found and they'll hit at this even sometimes more than they will jigs or minnows it's got a lot more draw power to it than what a regular small jig that we typically throw after the turnover as we get further into late fall crappie and the bait fish start to move further and further away from the really cool water areas as water temperatures drop off into the 40s crappie move on into their winter patterns on the southern shallow sections of the lake as the deeper stable water on the northern side of the lake peaks with water temperatures still around in the 50s and 60s at times this area area down here as you get further and further north here is much more stable so you guys can see just by looking at the map here this white indicates that's deeper this is in the 70 foot range out here these coves out here even if you go halfway back into them are still in the 30s while as if you go all the way up here on these river arms the entire main channel as deep as it may get is only in the 20s this is going to be much more volatile as far as temperature goes up here as opposed to down here but this is going to be where the fall bite kind of kicks in last it's also going to be there the longest so if you're starting to get into november and that early december bite you can still catch crappie that are in a fall pattern down here near the dam this area up here the further up the river arms you go they might be further along into their winter pattern and we got a video out on that as well if you guys want to check that out and learn how to catch crappie on stockton throughout the winter time but we're going to get back onto this so depending on what area of stockton you're fishing in the fall you can get crappie in different seasonal patterns the same day no matter no matter what temperature you are fishing that day, crappie use brush and standing timber in areas with bait fish, waiting for an easy meal to ambush from the shadows. So that's just kind of like a staple and a good easy pattern for you to follow. They will sometimes pull off on the main lake points or secondary points and different things like that as well in all seasons, but this is going to be your most consistent way to find fish. As long as you're finding areas, and on, on this map here in particular, it will tell you a lot of times when there are standing timber around. If I zoom in here on this cove here, this cove is loaded with standing timber. As you can see here, it says flooded timber kind of scattered around through this cove. There's just trees all throughout the whole thing. Crappie load up in here, and when you have such a big maze of standing trees, it helps to be able to find those bait fish. You can find the bait fish near the standing trees, fish around the same depth that those bait fish are sitting at. So if you're finding those shad to be eight to nine foot down in the water column, I would be looking for trees that are around eight to nine foot at least that you can fish down. You're looking for any kind of marks that are suspended around there fishing those areas close to those shad, you're going to be able to find crappie a lot faster that way. The other way that you could find some good fish and be able to find some of these crappie in areas that there aren't standing trees is this map here that's a interactive fishing map that the conservation department has put out with the brush piles that they have sank over the years. There's some that are as recent as this year here that have been placed in 2023. They throw a lot of cedar trees inside of Stockton Lake. They have them at different depths. They provide you with the exact GPS coordinates for it, what year it was placed, 
I like to go around and fish some of these, especially the ones at the end, maybe a year or two, the fish have kind of gotten some use out of it and they'll return back to those areas. And these are some that are just kind of like on the mouth of some of these pockets in this bigger uh, creek cove here up on the southern side of the lake. These fish will use these different times of the year quite a bit. So this is a great map to kind of figure out, if, you know, depending on what structure of the crop you're using or what season it is, you can find some hot spots on here and be able to consistently find brush. And uh, that's going to increase your chances of finding large numbers of crappie faster. They've got them sink in good areas for crappie to be using as habitat uh, kind of year round. Even some of them further a little bit back in the coves here, which might be better for when we have those first cool downs in the beginning of fall. And others that are out here on the main channel that are going to be good for the winter time as they pull back out into that deep area as you get closer towards like that December mark. Depending on what fall and what winter we get in Missouri, because it is the Ozarks, we could have 70 degree temperatures in December or we could have 20s. So it flexes quite a bit. I'll give you a little bit more of a zoomed out picture here. All these dots on here, all these orange dots are just brush piles loaded. If you click on any of them, it'll tell you the year. GPS coordinates and all that stuff. This one here was put in 2022 and it was a cedar tree that they put in. If you come up the lake here a little bit more, you can click on another one and it'll give you more details. Like this one was put in 2015 and it's got the GPS coordinates on it as well. I have great luck fishing in this cove down over here year round on Stockton on the uh, west side over here. This is going to be a great area to catch crappie for you. There's some standing trees. There's tons and tons and tons of bait fish in here during the fall. And there's plenty of brush piles that those crappie can set up around and ambush those bait fish as they're moving in and out of this gigantic creek arm of a cove that's on this lake. Not all brush piles are created equally, especially dependent on the season that you're in. Brush piles in an area with lots of bait fish close to or at the same depth as all the bait are going to consistently outproduce numbers of crappie compared to other brush piles that are away from the bait crappie are feeding on. This time of year in the fall, bait fish are never really far away from a hungry crappie. The wind direction kind of helps position some of the bait fish. If you don't have electronics or even if you do, it kind of helps you pinpoint where a good starting spot is going to be for the crappie. If you have wind coming out of the southeast here coming into this cove directly, you're going to find a lot of these fish stacked up on these secondary points um, where these bait fish are going to be even then to the backs of these coves if the wind's pushing directly into there. You're going to find all kinds of other fish feeding on them as well. Um, these crappie will set up here on these brush piles that are getting direct wind pushed onto them and they're going to be waiting for those bait fish to kind of come through that area and the wind on Stockton can be quite intense during the fall as we're going through a transition in the Ozarks. Uh, from one season to another, wind speeds can be picked up quite a bit. So do be careful when you're out on the water. White caps are not really something you want to play around with, especially if you're by yourself and it's cold outside. Um, you don't want to be falling in from, from getting knocked over by a wave or uh, getting stuck out in a situation that's not good and too small of a boat. So always wear your life jacket during this time of year if you're going by yourself and be safe out there on the water. The crappie fishing can be great whenever you have a nice wind blowing in right over on top of some of these brush piles and that will help fire up the fish at different times as well. So paying attention to wind direction is always a good idea and to keep you a little bit more keyed in on where those fish might be actively feeding at. You can see here the cove we were just looking at has great depth as well as good offshore structure that sticks off of so many secondary points in the cove. It also has some old road beds, some old bridges. It's got plenty of bait in it this time of year like I mentioned before. And the crappie during the beginning of the fall are going to come out from this area out here uh, and off of some of these secondary points in this big main lake flat over here as well. And they're going to start to push their way back into those areas of shatter moving to all the way back into here where there's still that first drop off uh, after that creek inlet is in the back of the cove. This is going to be a great area to go back in and catch some crappie during the beginning of the fall. This area back here is going to cool off first as opposed to what the temperature is out here at the mouth of this cove. It's quite long and the water that's back here could be four or five degrees cooler than it is out in the main lake. So always look for water temperature in the back and in the main lake, not just look at one because they can be pretty different and there might be an entirely different bite going on in different sections of the same lake. As this area back here gets cooler, as we get into the middle of late fall, the crappie will start to move back out into the middle of this cove and stack up on some of those brush piles I showed you guys earlier 
and some of the other offshore structure. This is a cove right here that I can catch crappie out of year round in Stockton Lake and has produced me quite a good amount of numbers and size. So if you're looking for just a good place to go start, try a big cove, break it down, try to figure out are they in the mouth of it, are they in the middle of it, or at the back of it. Keep a mental note of the wind direction, what kind of structure you're fishing, and the water temperature that you're seeing. That'll give you a great game plan going forward to fish other coves in that lake that day because it's going to give you a good idea of, okay, they're in the back, they're in the mouth, they're in the middle, and they're relating to X, Y, or Z cover. Most recent fish survey done by the conservation department showed 62% of the white crappie were over the 10 inch length limit and 56% of the black crappie were over the 10 inch minimum length limit as well. This is great news for us as anglers as it means there is an abundance of legal sized crappie in Stockton Lake for us to have great days out on the water this fall catching slab sized crappie for future fish fries. I hope this video helped you learn some new things about Stockton crappie fishing in the fall and what other patterns you can use and apply to other lakes. If you have any questions about fishing for fall crappie or Stockton Lake, comment below. Thank you for watching this video until the end. I appreciate your support and without you, this channel doesn't exist or grow, so really appreciate you being here. Since you stayed till the end of this one, I got a couple other videos here that I think you will enjoy. Tight lines and remember to explore deeper. There's more out there.